about you, but I'm so grateful. I'm so honored today, hallelujah, that we serve the King of glory. Come on, put your hands together and sing it with me today. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your
and I'd like to welcome you to Revival Tab's online campus experience. Now, if this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you for coming. Our hope is that you'll be empowered today. We want to connect with you, so please go to RevivalTab.org and click the first time guest link. We are so excited to share a life-changing word with you today, and we invite you to share, repost, and invite someone on whatever online campus that you're attending to hear this life-changing message. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would? Just wanna be with you. I just wanna be with you, King of Glory. Feel this place. I just wanna be with you. Yeah, just wanna be with you. Yes, the world will bow down.
fill this place, yes, Lord. King of glory, King of my peace, King of my peace. We need you to fill this place, God. So while you're getting ready, let me give you a little knowledge about the bumblebee. That's right, the bumblebee. Now, did you know that bumblebees are not supposed to fly? I mean, according to physics, science, and the laws of aerodynamics, it's impossible for them to become airborne. Their fat little bodies and their little wings, I mean, they should never be able to leave the ground. I guess scientists forgot to tell the bumblebee. Or maybe the bumblebee just didn't pay attention in physics class. I love that fact because it illustrates something that we see in our world all the time. Things that are supposed to be impossible happen all around us. Like little creatures that aren't supposed to fly buzz through the air. People with dark past are called by God to do great things. Marriages that are beyond repair are restored and redeemed. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, I mean, that's what the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11. One of the ways that we respond in faith to God's grace and God's goodness is in the area of generosity. When we sacrificially give, even in ways that don't make sense in the eyes of the world, we're honoring God with faith. When we listen to God's word and God's voice more than we listen to the doomsday news and advice from people all around us, we're acting in faith. I guess the bumblebee defies the laws of physics and our generosity defies the laws of selfishness. The way to have more is to give more. And the way to be more blessed is to live generously. Here at Revival Tab, we don't just give to the church. We give through the church. Now, there are three ways to give. You can text 84321 with your dollar amount or go to our online giving at revivaltab.org. Lastly, you can mail your giving to 16455 Woodward Avenue, Highland Park, Michigan, 48203. Thanks for giving generously to God's work here at Revival Tab.
Well, it's week two of our sermon series entitled This Christmas. Yes, and this Christmas will be a very special Christmas. No, I'm just kidding. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 35. Uh, type if you're a Donny Hathaway or a Chris Brown fan. I want to I wanna know. Like, are you Donny Hathaway's version of this Christmas? Or are you Chris Brown's version of this Christmas? Let me know in the comments. All right. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And it, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel. Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting This might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Skip down to verse 56. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then return home. Skip over with me to Matthew chapter one, verse 18. We'll start there. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary was pledged to be, to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy spirit because Joseph, her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her publicly to a disgrace he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. I want to tag this sermon, an ugly presentation of a beautiful present. An ugly presentation of a beautiful present. My aunt Marilyn, you all know her. I, we affectionately in, in the family call her Poppy, but my aunt Marilyn She is by far the best present rapper I know. She just knows how to make the boxes look so pretty. I mean, she just has the gift of putting the right paper with the right color ribbon and flowers and all sorts of other little things on the box or on the bag to make the presentation simply marvelous. You see, when something is wrapped nice, it makes you very excited about what's on the inside. Because if the outside is nice, surely the inside must be to die for. But what about when the wrapping is just all together ugly? I mean, U-G-L-Y. 
You see, we often do the Christmas story a disservice due to its familiarity. Most times, or more times than not, we romanticize the events of the nativity as we put them on postcards or we put them in children's plays and we sing about them in cute little Christmas carols. But I would have to argue that living through the events of the very first Christmas story probably felt very dreadful. I mean, just consider the facts. You have a teenage girl with her future ahead of her her whole life was rocked by a scandal, even though she did nothing wrong. A, a newlywed couple was uprooted from their home, their family, and their support system during the most inconvenient time of their lives. And then you have a king who was already losing his power to a Roman empire, discovered that a new king had been born that would bring an even greater threat to his authority. I mean, it seems like every life that was touched by the events of, of Christmas, the very first Christmas, experienced great inconvenience and great hardship. I think that many of us can relate to that because even as we approach Christmas present day, we, we too feel the inconvenience and hardship of the holiday season. How am I going to pay for that? I don't want to keep disappointing my family. Why, why couldn't they just cancel Christmas like they canceled everything else this year? And yet through these inconveniences, I believe the greatest opportunities back then presented themselves. I'm talking about opportunities for peace in the midst of chaos, opportunities for powerful influence, and ultimately an opportunity for the salvation of all humanity. Wrapped presents under a tree provide so much joy for millions of children and even grown folks, if we're honest about it, on Christmas morning all across the globe. And we began unwrapping the process to see what's beneath the paper inside the box. Oftentimes, the gifts that God brings us come wrapped in undesirable wrappings. They have not been taken to my Aunt Marilyn's house to get decorated and presentable. <laughs> and because of their ugly, undesirable wrapping presentation, we don't take the time to uncover the gift that is on the inside that God has for us. You know, Sometimes Christmas comes wrapped in disappointment, inconvenience, and hardships. But I want to submit to you today, on this Sunday morning, that it's not what happens to you, but it's how you deal with what happens to you. Preach Holy Ghost. I believe that as believers, we must learn how to channel those troubles that we face in our lives into a bigger purpose. Let's face it, we give bad gifts sometimes. Come on, be honest. I mean, I, I, I give, we give bad gifts at times. The statistics say that one in two Americans dislike at least one gift each holiday. Average cost of unwanted gifts costs approximately, watch this, $49.95. It's reported that over $15.2 billion, that's a billion with a B, was wasted on unwanted gifts in 2020. One in four people pass along unwanted presents by regifting it to somebody else. Don't tell nobody, but I know who you are. One, two, three, it would be you. <laughs> But I'm glad to know that the Bible says this about the gift giving ability of my God. And that is that every good and every perfect gift is from above. Do I have any witnesses out there that know what I'm talking about? And cometh down from the father of lights with which whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God isn't changing, my brothers and sisters. He is the same yesterday, 
today and forevermore. So if he was giving good gifts and perfect gifts back then, can I just remind us today that he is still giving good and perfect gifts today, regardless of the ugly and undesirable wrapping or presentation that the gift may show up in. We just need to do some unwrapping of our situations to really find more of Jesus, more of Christ, the savior in everything that we face. So what's under the wrapping paper of disappointment? I want to submit to you today a few opportunities that disappointment brings. Just a few opportunities that disappointment brings to us. Number one, disappointments are opportunities to worship. Ah, let's get right into it. Yes, disappointments are opportunities to worship. Look back down at your Bible, Luke chapter one, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary's response to her pregnancy was surprising. But even though her whole life was turned upside down, she responded from a place of pure obedience. She says, I am the Lord's servant. In other words, she gave God a yes. When was the last time that you told God yes? Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Yes to his path and plan for your life. The scriptures only record her obedient response, but you have to believe that she experienced some type of hesitation just as you and I would have. Her life was forever changed. Her future, her relational status, her reputation, they all now seem to hang in the balance. And she might have even gone through all five stages of grief before her eventual acceptance of the circumstance. She didn't stop there, though. She added faith to her acceptance. And when you add faith to your acceptance, it turns it into gratitude. She worshiped. Look at Luke chapter one, verses four, starting at verse 46. We see the song of Mary, Mary's song. Look at verse 46. It says, and Mary said, my soul, Lord, I feel your presence right now. Doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my savior, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done great to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Talk about an about face. I mean, come on. Her world was just rocked, flipped, turned upside down, and she probably felt low and last. But God has a way. Somebody, somebody, somebody just say God has a way. God has a way of turning bad things around for your good. You, you've got to remember that you are in the army of the Lord. And though you might at times feel like if that forgotten soldier in the back, picking up the rear with no one paying attention to you. Can I just tell you in a moment's notice, the captain of the army is about to shout about face. Ah, and what that means is those who were in the front will now be in the back. And those who were in the back will now be leading the charge. Don't you dare look at your disappointment just as disappointment, but look at it as an opportunity to worship the God of your salvation. I remember Courtney and I first Christmas, I wanted this coat from Van Dyke's. My granddaddy had this coat. My daddy had this coat. I wanted this coat. I wanted the coat from Van Dyke's. 
I remember coming downstairs that Christmas morning and there was a box under the tree and it had my name on it. I take the paper off the box only to see that the box had the name Sears on it. I said, Lord, it's the woman you gave me. <laughs> I'm disappointed on the inside, but I press on with opening the box anyway. And much to my surprise, when I opened that Sears box, there was the coat, not a coat, but the coat that I wanted. And it also had a matching scarf and a matching glove set. See, sometimes you might be disappointed with how things look on the outside. I feel like preaching up in here. Uh, uh, the gift might not come in the box that you prefer, but somebody needs to type in the chat, keep on unwrapping. See, we won't always feel like worshiping, but when we're met with disappointment, ah, but that's the hidden option available to each and every believer of Jesus Christ. Disappointment offers a chance to get closer to God. Is there anybody that's ever been disappointed and God used that to draw you closer to him? The greatest work of God that God wants to do in our world will often come about because of the people's proper response to disappointment. I had an opportunity to sit with some of our young people after the shooting in Oxford. I can tell you, they know how to properly respond to disappointment. I love how God is growing and grooming our next generation because when we choose to worship instead of complain, we get to be part of those great things that God longs to do in us and through us to impact the world around us. Somebody ought to give God some praise right there, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just take a moment and just uh, uh, worship the God of our salvation? God, we love you today. We worship you today. We love you, oh God. See, we have the opportunity to worship God with our words, to worship him through giving to others and to worship him by loving the unlovable. Let me just tell you, disappointments are opportunities to worship. And my next point is simply this, disappointments are opportunities to trust. Matthew chapter one, look at verses 24 and 25. It says that when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. <laughs> Brother Joseph comes home and discovers that his fiance was pregnant. I've got to let that just marinate for a while because y'all act like y'all want to be all spiritual on that like that was just normal. So let's just let that sink in. <laughs> I mean, the only rational explanation was that she had dishonored their promise to be married and had been with another man. He, Joseph had lived a godly, pure life up to that point. Things were looking good for Brother Joseph. But then news came along that seemed to just derail all of his hard work. It would have been natural to take the easy way out and break the engagement. That was his right to do. Or someone else may have just decided since purity didn't seem like it was on the table anymore, he could just give up on the righteous marriage that he had dreamt about. And even after the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and told him that this was God's plan, let me just tell you something. If, if we're honest about it, it didn't change the reality of what those outside the situation would think. All progress in his life seemed to be lost. Yet, <laughs> Lord, I feel your presence. 
right now. Yet he chose to trust God. See, this is the real yet will I trust him moment. <laughs> See, Joseph might have felt like all his progress toward a godly marriage was gone. And from an outsider's perspective, maybe it looked this way, but it wasn't. See, we need to trust God's plan for our life if we've bought, see, if we've bought into the outside pressure of what our lives are supposed to look like. Let me just tell you, let me help you right now. You got to just stop it. Stop buying into what this world expects of you. Stop buying into what your family may expect of you. Only buy into what God has planned for your life. See, we can choose to model our life after God's plan or the world's plan. But let me tell you something, when you choose to model your life after God's plan, then and only then, even if it feels like you're losing progress, you can trust that God is moving you forward regardless of the appearance. Disappointments are opportunities to worship. Disappointments are opportunities to trust. But let me give you my final point. Disappointments are opportunities. Watch this to encourage others. <laughs> Glory to God. Look back down at Luke chapter one, verse 44. It says, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Skip down to verse 40, 56. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Can I tell you something? See, when you read the story of Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, it's very easy to believe that she left home to hide out until her pregnancy was over. But when you really think about the geography and the travel back in this period of time, it's very unlikely that Mary was very far along in her pregnancy when this happened. Instead, it's much more likely that she went to visit her cousin because she was experiencing something similar. <laughs> Elizabeth's pregnancy was also a miraculous event. Mary visiting with Elizabeth became a source of encouragement to both of them. Oh, Lord, I feel you right now. Ha! Huh. See, Elizabeth felt her baby leaping in her room, which indicated that a significant moment had just occurred. And that helped to confirm what Mary had indeed heard from the angel. I remember watching after... Uh, George H.W. Bush passed away and watching the television and them showing videos and photos of the former presidents standing and laughing together. President Clinton, President Obama, President George W. Bush. What was interesting to me as I watched those clips is that even though many former presidents ran on completely opposing platforms and might have even spoken negative things about each other, there was a certain ease with which they interacted with each other. That's because they all have experiences, watch this, that very few people can relate with. The shared experience creates a point of commonality or a common denominator that very few people will ever understand. Let me just tell you, disappointments can become opportunities to relate to someone in a way uncommon to most people. Similar experiences can often unite even those who were very different from each other. Maybe you experienced having a child out of wedlock and you wondered, God, why me? Why did I have to endure such shame? Maybe it was for such a time as this for you to show love and compassion to someone else who may be going through a like situation. Maybe you went through an ugly divorce and you thought to yourself, God, I wish you would just take me from this world, but you're still here. And it just might be because you are able to help someone else who may be going through a like situation. Maybe you spent time in prison, went through an embarrassing firing from your job, 
or have even been ostracized from an inner circle of friends that you once had. Can I just tell you something? Sometimes disappointments aren't as much about us as we feel they are. Maybe they're actually something that God wants us to use to accomplish his purpose here on this earth. And when we can relate with someone in love, having had similar experiences, we can encourage them. We can become a point of healing for other people, which can ultimately lead them to God as well. We all experience disappointments. Even those that God is using to fulfill his perfect plan on this earth. You see, you got to understand this. Disappointments are not setbacks. Disappointments are tools that God can use. And when we submit our disappointments to him by worshiping him, by trusting him, by encouraging others, we too can overcome the disappointments. You see, we got to learn how to use them as fuel instead of just viewing them as failures. And for some of you, all your disappointments in life have led you to this very moment. And I want to encourage you to allow Jesus to show you the opportunities that are latent within your disappointments. Maybe you're here today, you're listening to me. And your disappointments, you one after the other, you just say, God, I just don't know what to do. Let me just say something. He wants to show you the opportunities <laughs> that are within your disappointments. And all you have to do is trust him with your heart. Allow him to show you all the opportunities that are wrapped up in those disappointments by giving him your life. I know this may sound very frightening. People may have presented this to you before and it sounded very confusing and complicated, but I can assure you, my brother and sister, it is not complicated. It's not confusing. As a matter of fact, we like to say around here that it is as easy as your ABC. A stands for admit. Admit that you need help. I can promise you, I need help. We all need help. And there's no better person to reach out to help than for than with is for the Creator. Someone may have tried to present this to you before and it was confusing, very complicated, but I can promise you it is not complicated. It's not confusing. As a matter of fact, it's as easy as your ABCs. A, admit, admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. In other words, simply admit that you need help. B, it stands for believe. Believe that God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and that he rose again. And then you gotta make the, the decision to repent of those sins, to, Repent simply means to change, to turn away from what is wrong and turn to him, the only one who is right. A, admit, B, believe, and then C is confess. Confess that Jesus Christ is now Lord of your life. Lord simply means he's now the boss. He is the one in control. He is the one that makes the final calls over the affairs of your life. Trust him with your heart. If you're ready to make that decision to give Christ your heart, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, thank you for giving me yet another chance. I admit I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. He faced hell for me so that I wouldn't have to. I repent of those sins. Wash me, cleanse me, save me. Today, 
I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. And I vow to live for him the best that I can with the Holy Spirit as my helper for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. My brother and sister, let me tell you something. I know life may have been full of disappointments, but can I just tell you something? Inside of those disappointments are opportunities for you to draw closer to God through worship. Hallelujah. Through trusting in Him and also to be an encouragement to someone else. As we always say, go with God and He will go with you. Join us next Sunday as we continue on in this series, This Christmas, as we unpack the Christmas story and how it is still impacting our lives today, some 2,000 plus years later. God bless you. Revival Tabernacle family, I'm so glad that you decided to jump online with us this morning. My name is Pastor Mac, and we have some announcements to get through, so let's get to them. First up, a look into 2022. As always, we want to kick off the new year right, and we do that by fasting and by praying. This year, we are going to be going through That I May Know Him. We're going to be studying the names of God together. We'll be walking through a book by Tony Evans called Praying Through the Names of God. We're going to be fasting together, only eating one meal a day, and we will also be gathering together Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and and at 6 p.m. At 6 a.m. we'll be on our prayer line in the morning kicking the day off right and at 6 p.m. we will be closing the day with a Zoom call on the name of God for that week. You can see information about the book, about the fast, about the times that we're gathering, about the Zoom call. All of the information is on our website at revivaltab.org. So get ready to jump into the new year together and go take a peek so you can be ready for 2022. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas and we want to do the same thing inside of this house at RT. So we are calling all daughters to join us on December the 17th. That is a Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're going to be decorating the church. We're going to be joining some other volunteers as we decorate. It's going to be an awesome time, a festive time. So all daughters, if you have any other questions, please reach out to Sister Courtney. And we look forward to seeing you there. This upcoming weekend might be one of the craziest weekends of 2021. Why? Let me tell you why. Kicking it off on December the 18th, we are having our Serve the City Christmas toy giveaway extravaganza goodness, all right? It is going to be one of the awesomest events that you've ever seen. We are putting on for the city of Highland Park from 1230 to four o'clock. Families will be able to come and get gifts for their children. Children will be able to hang out at our youth and kids station and be able to see a live petting zoo and take pictures. We also have food and coats and clothes and tons of other things. It is going to be an amazing time. But here's the deal. We need two huge things if you're listening to this. So if you're listening, put I'm listening in the chat because we need two things from you. The first is this. We need you to sign up to serve. We can't do this alone, and so we want to serve this city of Highland Park, and so we need your help on Saturday, but we need to know that you're coming. So go ahead, go to the Serve Not Sit link at revivaltab.org, click on it. And then the second thing that I need from you is to spread the word. We have a registration link for anybody that plans on coming to our event. That's also on revivaltab.org. So if you can send out a mass text or blast it on your social media to let people know, that we're having this amazing event. It would be so awesome. And then following that incredible, amazing day up, 
We're gonna have an awesome service in person on December the 19th at 10 a.m. So make sure you bring your mask and show up to that. It's gonna be an incredible weekend. You don't wanna miss. Make sure you sign up for our Serve the City Christmas toy giveaway. We cannot wait to see you there. Thank you so much for listening to these announcements. And if you missed any at all, we want to make sure that you get all the information necessary so you can always follow us at Revival Tab on our Facebook and Instagram. You can also go to our website at revivaltab.org. Scroll to the bottom and subscribe to our weekly newsletter that goes out with all the info in it. We love you so much. Christmas time is an amazing time here at Revival Tabernacle, and we hope that you have an incredible week. Can't wait to see you next weekend.